Hey guys, I've got a really fun video for you all today. We're going to be going over the top five most hilarious Scrabble phonies or non-words of all time. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you probably know that I already have multiple videos out on outrageous phonies, so picking just five for this compilation was quite a daunting task. I ended up choosing five phonies for which I distinctly remember seeing them for the first time and bursting into pretty much uncontrollable laughter for at least a minute afterwards. So I really hope you guys react in the same way and have a great time watching this video and get lots of laughs. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. Our first example of the video, number five on the list of most hilarious phonies of all time, comes from a game played at a recent tournament held in Massachusetts. The two players were Joey Malik, a longtime top player who I regularly face off against in Blitz sessions that I post to my channel, as well as Ed Liebfried, another very strong and experienced expert who I've had multiple really interesting games against in tournaments. Now, it was Ed's turn in this position, Joey just emptied the bag by playing the word Deliria down the C column for 18 points. Joey has taken a 5 point lead and he's got only two tiles left, an M and an O as you can see over here. Ed on the other hand still has 7 tiles left, including the very powerful blank. So what he'd really love to do here is bingo because that would end the game on the spot resulting in an easy win for Ed. The problem is, there aren't a lot of places on this board, or so it would seem, for Ed to play a bingo. However, Ed was completely undeterred by that and found a 9-letter play from the SO on the top right corner of the board, namely SOOEING, spelled S-O-O-E-E blank Y-I-N-G for 80 points, which seems to win the game on the spot. However, there is a problem, and it's a very big problem. Sooing is not an acceptable word, and Joey would promptly challenge us off the board, play his last two tiles, and win the game by a score of 409 to 371. So, crazy sequence of events here, and uh, let's look back once again at this word that had attempted to play. He played sooing with two O's followed by two E's followed by a Y. So, uh, the more you look at it, the more ridiculous it kind of looks with all those vowels followed by uh, a Y, which is kind of a vowel in its own right. But uh, let's try to make sense of what Ed might have been thinking of here. Now, once again, on the left-hand side of the screen, we have what Ed attempted to play, which was sooing, spelled S-O-O-E-E-Y-I-N-G. Now, there are actually a couple words that are somewhat similar to what Ed attempted here. First, we have the word sui, spelled S-O-O-E-Y, which is indeed a valid word. However, two things. Number one, it's an interjection, as you can see in the definition I've copied here. It's an interjection that is used in calling pigs. So what that means is because it's an interjection and not a verb, you can't put an I-N-G at the end of it. Suying is not a word spelled even S-O-O-E-Y-I-N-G. And the second thing, of course, is even if that were a word, that is definitely not the way Ed attempted to spell this word. Ed put an extra E between the first E and the Y. So even if Ed had spelled this interjection correctly and tried to put an ING on it, it still wouldn't have been a valid word. And we also have a different word, cooey, which can be spelled actually either C-O-O-E-E -E or C-O-O-E-Y. Now, both of these are verbs. They're defined as to call out shrilly like a bird might do. So they both do take an ing. So either C-O-O-E-E-I-N-G or C-O-O-E-Y-I-N-G would both be valid words. However, once again, we see that in both of those cases, you never have this O-O-E-E-Y pattern. It's always O-O-E-E -E without the Y or O-O-E-Y without the second E. So you can kind of see where Ed was coming from here, perhaps, with this play he made of sweeing. But in reality, in English, you just simply do not get this O-O-E-E-Y pattern together in a word. It just does not happen. So uh, a pretty hilarious attempt here. And yeah, this, uh, this earns a spot at number five once again on our list of most hilarious phonies of all time. Our next example, number four on the list of most hilarious phonies of all time, comes from a game played between my good friends Andy Hong and Jackson Smiley at this past summer's Scrabble Players Championship held in Las Vegas. Both of these guys are very strong players, and Jackson just took a 59-point lead by playing the word Fain for 33 points in the bottom right corner on his last turn. Realizing that he's at a big deficit and that Jackson left only a single tile in the bag, Andy realized that time was quickly running out if he wanted to mount a comeback. So he decided if he wanted any chance whatsoever of winning this game, he needed to bingo and immediately. So that's exactly what Andy did, playing Lowerer, L-O-U-R-E-R-E-R, -E -R -E -R, to the R in rack for 60 points. 
Now, you guys guessed it. Lowerer is very much not a word. However, it seems to put Jackson in a bit of a predicament because he's got two options. Number one is he can let Lowerer stay on the board because he's only down one point, and if he plays something like the word blings on the sixth row right here, making the two other word sh, Jackson's going to go up over 20 points, and Andy only has one tile left, namely the O. So Andy is not going to be able to get nearly enough points on his outplay to overcome that deficit, and Jackson will hold on to win the game pretty comfortably by about 10 or 15 points. So that's one option. The other option for Jackson is, of course, to challenge Lowerer off the board. However, it comes with a catch. If Jackson is somehow wrong and he challenges and Lowerer happens to be a word, then Jackson's going to lose his turn, and Andy's going to, of course, win the game quite easily. All he needs to do is play his O out anywhere, and he ends the game on the spot, getting extra points from Jackson's rack. So Jackson better be very sure that Lowerer is not a word if he's going to challenge. However, Jackson didn't think about any of this. He was so sure that Lowerer was not a word that he didn't even hold the play. He just stopped the clock immediately, declaring that he was challenging. And uh, of course, this came off the board and Jackson would go on to win the game quite handily. But how was Jackson so sure so quickly that Lowerer was not a word? So here's the thing. Lower, spelled L-O-U-R, is indeed a valid word. It's a verb meaning to frown. So that might lead one to believe that a Lowerer, spelled L-O-U-R-E-R, -E could be somebody who frowns. A lot of verbs can take an E-R at the end and become nouns, which mean somebody who does that verb. However, it turns out that lower is not one of those verbs. Lowerer is actually not a word, but it would be a far more reasonable phony to attempt than lowerer. Once you start talking about lowerer, you get into the realm of absurdity when you try to define it. Because let's think about what lowerer would even mean if it were to be a word. A lowerer would mean somebody who lowerers, but a lowerer is already somebody who lowers. So a lowerer would be somebody who somebody who lowers. But you can't even be somebody who lowers in the first place because lowerer, as we just mentioned, is not a word. So this is just absolutely absurd, and this is part of why I think Jackson just looked at this and he was like, I'm not even thinking about this. This is just not a word. And he immediately challenged it off, and lowerer, of course, came off the board just as quickly as it was played, but not without earning a spot in this video as the fourth most hilarious phony of all time. The third most hilarious phony of all time, believe it or not, was played at the same tournament by the same player as the fourth most hilarious phony of all time that we just looked at. We once again have Andy Hong, this time taking on Josh Schokel, who would eventually go on to win the whole Scrabble Players Championship. In this position, the bag is empty, Josh is down to four tiles, he's got a D, two E's, and an R, and Andy still has seven tiles on his rack. As you can see, he's got the blank, but he's got some clunky tiles to go with it, including the dreaded UV combo. Being down just over 80 points with the bag empty, Andy knows the only way he's possibly going to ever win this game is if he bingos out. So that's exactly what he does. He plays a 10-letter bingo of Vucinini, V-O-U-C-I-N-N-I-N-I, through an I-N-N already on the board, covering two double word scores, one with his V and the second one with his N. The tiles in Vucinini add up to 14 points. You multiply that by 4 for the two double word scores, you get 56. You add 50 points for a bingo, and you get a whopping 106 point out bingo, which catapults Andy out into the lead, 502 to 478, seemingly ending the game on the spot with an amazing victory. However, as you guys may guess, Vucinini is not a word. And of course, being as it was the out bingo and he had nothing to lose, Josh challenged this absolutely ridiculous but hilarious phony of Vucinini off of the board and would go on to play out with Eider and win this game quite easily. Now, only Andy really knows what Vucinini is. Well, actually, really nobody knows because it's not a real word. But in any case, the general consensus among the Scrabble community is that Vucinini is hypothetically supposed to be a type of pasta similar to fettuccine. But I'll leave it up to you guys' imagination what Vucinini really is. Our next example, the second most hilarious phony of all time, once again features defending Scrabble player champion Josh Sokol. Here he's facing off against 2022 Scrabble player champion Michael Fagan. Michael has just emptied the bag by playing the word lay down the M column for 30 points. 
And this is a devastating play for Josh because Josh was prepared to bingo with Niobate, N-I-O-B-A-T-E, down the N column, making the two-order word L, which would have won him the game. Now, unfortunately, there's nowhere for Josh to bingo, and being down 58 points with the bag empty, there's no path to victory. However, Josh was undeterred by the fact that he couldn't win and still managed to find a very stylish play. He noticed that there is a disconnected B and a disconnected H on the first row here, and he could have an opportunity to play a very nice seven-letter word for a lot of points hitting that triple word score. And that's exactly what he finds playing Bobita for 42 points, cutting his deficit to 16. Now, uh, a Bobita is, as you guys might be able to guess, not a word. But it puts Michael in a bind, because if Michael challenges Bobita and it is a word, then Michael's going to lose. If Michael were to lose his challenge and pass his turn here, then Josh would just have IN, and he'd be able to go out. His best scoring outplay would be Ani right here for 13 points. The score would now be within 3 points, and after Michael passes, Josh would end up winning this game by 9 points. So, going back, Michael cannot afford to challenge this if he has any doubt whatsoever about its validity. And Michael was not sure whether Bobita was valid, so he made the smart decision here. He let it go and played quad from this queue for 28 points, which secured the victory despite Josh going out next turn. Now, Bobita definitely doesn't sound quite as ridiculous on the surface as something like Vucinini, but the reason it's so funny is because of its truly amazing definition. As you can see here, a Babita is the hybrid offspring of a bobcat and a cheetah. And at first you might think, oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. I know a liger is the hybrid offspring of a lion and a tiger. So after all, these are all cats, which means if a lion and a tiger can have a hybrid offspring, why couldn't a bobcat and a cheetah? And now I am a top Scrabble player. I am certainly not a renowned animal biologist. So unfortunately, I do not have a scientific answer for you on that front. That being said, if there are any expert animal biologists who are watching this video, please do let us know in the comment section why a bobcat and a cheetah in real life do not seem to hybridize. That being said, as a certified grandmaster at Scrabble, I can tell you with absolute certainty that Babida is not in the Scrabble dictionary. Our final example of the video, and what I'm ranking as the most hilarious phony in the history of Scrabble, features none other than Matthew Tunnicliffe. Matthew is a top player and former North American champion, well known for his penchant for playing creative and sometimes absurd phonies. In fact, I actually have a whole video on some of Matthew's best phonies. You should be sure to check it out if you haven't already. But as far as this position goes, Matthew finds himself in a pretty close endgame against another strong expert, Yuri Pivavarov. Matthew is down 12 points and it's his turn holding A-E-I-I-R-T. From tile tracking, he knows that Yuri has four tiles left and those tiles are A-E-K-S. So Matthew's in a bit of a pickle here. The problem is he can't play all of his tiles at once and end the game, and holding only one point tiles, he isn't going to be able to score all that many points. The other problem is, with Yuri's four tiles, he's going to have multiple places to go out next turn. He can play Sakes to the S in Edacious, and he can also play Sake on the 10th row, hooking an S onto F to make Fs. And there's really no way for Matthew to stop both of these without giving Yuri another place to play out. So with Yuri going out next turn, Matthew knows he's only going to get one more turn to either go out, which as I mentioned he can't, or score enough points to overtake Yuri, which is also not possible. So with that in mind, Matthew could easily resign himself to defeat in this position, but if you know anything about Matthew, you know that is not how he operates. And indeed, that is not what he does here. He notices the word Tet sitting on the board in the K column, and he decides to extend Tet with, wait for it, Tetiart. T-E-T-I-A-R-T -T for 21 points, making X-I and Y-A as overlaps. Now, if you guys have made it this far in the video, it's probably no shock to you that Tetiart is absolute bogus. And part of what makes this phony so hilarious is, like, it just doesn't even resemble anything that I know of that's a valid word. It is just absolute gobbledygook. And Matthew decided to basically just throw down the first thing he could play there that seemed phonetically acceptable and would score a number of points. However, there was another very sneaky purpose to this play, as Matthew explains in his comment. He says, I was down to under 30 seconds and so was Yuri. I threw this down because he might panic low on time and hook his S onto it. So what is Matthew saying here? Well, when players are very low on time, they tend to panic because if you go over your lot of time in Scrabble, you start incurring steep point penalties. So with Yuri down to just a couple seconds, it would be natural for him to fixate on the most obvious thing to him on the board. And in general, the most obvious thing on any given turn is what your opponent just opened. And what did Matthew just do? Well, he just played Tetiar. 
So the most natural place for Yuri to play the word he was looking at, sake, is now going to be hooking the word Matthew just played, making tetiarts and sake on the ten row. Now, of course, as I just mentioned, tetiart is absolute bogus, so it should come as no surprise that tetiarts is also absolute bogus. So what Matthew is hoping for here, once again, is that Yuri is going to panic, play sake and tetiarts, which Matthew would then challenge off the board and play out with his E and I remaining, and of course win the game quite handily. So what a clever idea by Matthew. And this is another reason why I think this is the most hilarious phony of all time. Not just because it's so ridiculous, but also because of this really amazing and honestly very crafty logic that Matthew had for playing this phony. Now, did Yuri fall for it? To his credit, he did not. He did let Tetiart stay on the board, but he didn't play Tetiarts. He, as planned, played Sake over here, hooking the S onto F to make Fs. And this is yet another reason why I think this is the most hilarious phony. Yuri's response, and it probably was not intentional at all, it almost certainly wasn't intentional, is almost a slap in the face. For F's sake, Matthew, did you really think that was going to work against me? Yuri, of course, won this game as he played out with Sake taking a lead and would get four more points for Matthew's unplayed tiles, leading to a 395 to 380 victory. Now, it didn't work out for Matthew in the sense that Matthew didn't win the game, but you absolutely have to applaud the effort. He gave himself an outside chance to do it, and not only that, he got away with what is, I'm deeming, the most hilarious phony in Scrabble history. So props to Matthew for that, and props to everybody in this video for, even if it didn't work out, just making some awesome content. And, you know, that's one thing that's great about Scrabble. It can be a really fun and really hilarious game, and I hope and think this video showed you guys why. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it and got some good laughs out of it. Let me know what you think of this video. If you think there are any phonies that should have been in this video but weren't, then let me know as well. Always eager to learn about more of them that I might not be aware of. And yeah, I think that's about it, guys. So thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all for the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.